Hello, and welcome back to Beetle and Board Games. Today, we're gonna to talk about probably the most difficult aspect of photography, which is composition. So how do you know where to put things and then arrange them to make the picture look good? So in the nature of photography itself, it's highly subjective, but there are, I would say, three major guidelines that would definitely help you right now take better pictures. And the reason why composition is so hard to teach is because it's not as technical as the other stuff. So like lighting, for example, you have studio lighting, and then once you adjust ISO, aperture, f-stop, and so forth, all of that will be fixed and everything will look nice. You know, once it looks nice, it just stays that way, but you can't just throw a bunch of pieces together and then all of a sudden, okay, this is a perfectly composed picture. Everything changes. With composition, everything changes depending on where you are, depending on what you're taking a picture of, whether it's portrait or whether it's uh, product photography. All of that makes composition way more difficult to understand. So the first one that I want you to be consciously aware of is leading lines. Now here's a really obvious one of a picture I took of Barker's Row. So this was taken on a bridge and you can see how this is a classic example of showcasing perspective. So you start out with really wide lens and then as it narrows, it closes in on the subject. So looking back, I probably could have centered this photo more because it looks uneven from the right and left. So it's always important to go back and reflect on your work. I mean, it's not a bad picture. I still really like it, but there are still things I can fix and adjust that way I can get better moving forward. The thing is though, with leading lines, they won't always be so linear. For example, here's another picture of Barker's Row. So this time, yes, you have lines going down the center, but then it closes off in kind of this triangle formation. So your eyes kind of get pushed back towards the focus, which is the horse card. So leading lines is more of a guide for the viewer themselves. When you're looking at a picture, this is where your eye is going to travel. Eyes are going to travel. So when you're looking at leading lines in a picture, this is where your eyes are being guided towards as they travel across to see and scan for where the subject is. Now on top of that, leading lines don't always have to be straight. They can be curved, they can be bent, and then sometimes that's intentional. So there's a third picture of Barker's Row. So I want that whimsical theme of the circus in order to do that. That's why you kind of want to circle around and around towards your subject. When you imagine clowns, I, I imagine them kind of jumping around and being loopy and goofy. So that's the intended effect of what I wanted for that light picture. So number one, leading lines. Think about how you want to guide your viewer towards the subject of interest. So number two, layer your photos. So what do I mean by that? Take a look at this picture that I took of Chai the board game. Here's a really good example of composition. Here I want to take a picture of two different components. I want to take a picture of the Chai coin itself and then all of the uh, cinnamon ingredients that go along with it. So one is metal and the other ones are cardboard tokens. If I were to put that metal coin on a table, that would be boring. Therefore, you want to look at things to layer it with and that also plays along the lines of texture. So since the ingredients are brown, and the metal coin was brown, I didn't want to contrast the background itself. Instead, I wanted that background to match the same color of what I'm laying on top of it, which is that wooden table that I show there. Actually, more it's more of a wooden tray. And then you want to think about the number of components, um, the ratio of components, okay? You have one metal coin, four or so of the cardboard components. Let's say I take the metal coin, and now I layer that below the cardboard pieces. It makes no sense, right? Because it's only one metal coin Therefore, that one metal coin should probably be the subject of interest, right? This is what should be in focus. And then to really punch in that layering effect, what I did was I got real ingredients, so like I got real star anise and real cinnamon sticks, and then also put them in the background. So what's nice is that those colors match more along what the, the texture of the wooden board itself. So that way it's kind of like a double layering effect, right? You're laying the cardboard tokens to emphasize the metal tokens, and then you're layering the real ingredients in order to showcase the cardboard components too, because since they're all really bright and white. And then another way of understanding layering is aside from just putting things on top of each other, you also want to layer the background as in understand where your bokeh should be and should not be, okay? So if your metal subject is in focus, you don't need to put the cinnamon sticks in front of the metal coin, right? You don't want it as close to, you don't want it close to the viewer. Reason for that is because the cinnamon sticks aren't the parts in focus. That is what's helping to bring the rest of the picture together. Now that's why I put the cinnamon sticks towards the end. That way you can still see and make out what it is without it taking away from the intended effect, which are the board game components right in the center. And then if we were to incorporate the leading lines aspect here, so you have wooden lines that lead diagonally up. And on top of that, you have the cinnamon sticks, which kind of act as a block towards the viewer's eyes. That way your center focus is on the board game components. So we're thinking about leading lines. We're thinking about layering. The last tip I have for you is to 
be typical. Hold on, you're like, wait a minute. In literally every single blog post, Instagram post, you always say to avoid what everyone else is doing. And that's true, okay? But in order for you to make a unique composition, you have to understand what everyone else is gonna do first. And then you can deviate from, from that. For example, let's say you're taking a landscape photo of a mountain, okay? I'm using mountain because we just came back from camping in mountain. Anyways, let's say you're taking a landscape photo, okay? And you are going to do what every other tourist does. And by that, I mean, here's a nice, beautiful mountain, okay? What are you gonna do is stand up right up to it, just like everyone else, and snap a photo, okay? That's what everyone else is gonna do. They're gonna stand there, they're gonna take <laughs> family photos of the same pose. No, why would I be annoyed of taking the same family photo, uh, same pose in a different background? Jokes aside though, what everyone else does is that they're gonna stand up straight on the landscape and take a picture, okay? So now you know what they do, you're gonna do the complete opposite. Maybe there's a cool little tree branch that'll, have, that'll give a nice border to the edge of the picture. Maybe if you kneel down, you can get better reflection of the water across the lake to see the mountains better. Maybe you're gonna crouch down and then throw leaves in front of your lens. And they don't always have to turn out to be good. My, my ratio for taking photos is, I'll probably like two photos out of the 300 that I take. So it's not easy to think of a composition right away. When you take a photo and you're consciously thinking of it, that's what makes the photo that much better. Here's the last example, okay, of one I most recently took on my Instagram. So I just took um, the Legend of Korra miniatures from the board game and then emphasized their elements uh, at Mammoth, which is where we were. But I did forget to bring an airbender, which is why I took it at home. Either way, the first photo I took is this one. I looked at it and I was like, okay, this is cool. You know, it has a nice reflection. But then right before I posted it, I was like, this is exactly what I'm trying to avoid, which is being comfortable. For the most part, I don't want a picture that people are just gonna gloss over and not think about. Right? I want something that's gonna have an impact on people when they see it. Now just for that, scrapped it, went to Michael's, bought a Jabwalkies type mask because it's the same, or at least it's a similar one to Amon, who's the evil villain from the last, not last time, but from Legend of Korra, if you don't know already. And then I put his mask on black tile. And then the goal here was to take a picture of air, okay? Right, so let's combine all three guidelines in this one photo. First off, where are your leading lines? There, there aren't any leading lines, really. Right, it's just a reflection. I mean, arguably you could say the reflection was the leading line, but then you don't know what to look at. Are you looking at the reflection or are you looking at the miniature itself? What do you want your viewer to see? The miniature, right? The miniature itself is the center focus. The mask, you have the facial structure, right? I didn't want to do it backwards because if I did it backwards, then it would go from the forehead down, right? So there's not really a line that guides your viewers towards the miniature. And then you have the nose, which kind of curves inward, right? And that line where the bridge of your nose is, is where the miniature is gonna be. So that is how I established leading lines as the first feature in this photo. Now, secondly, if we're talking about layers, the first one didn't have any layers, right? It's just him on a flat surface. It's just Amon on a flat surface. But then when you add the mask, now you're adding a lot of texture to the bottom of the miniature. And then also added in a humidifier, in order to get that smoke effect that way you can actually take a picture of air. So now you add in layers of the mask, add in the air from the humidifier, so it kind of looks like he's air bending from the side, right? As his hand is pushed out, see the mist kind of blowing through and then adding in that dark, mysterious vibe to the photo. And the last tip was to be typical, right? There's no way, I probably wouldn't have even thought of this photo if I didn't take the first one. I just put it on the floor and the reflection looks cool and call it a day. No, that is not what we're doing here. We're trying to make good quality photos in order to do that, you kind of have to understand where your base is from. And that's how you get to the final photo right there. And I think it turned out pretty good. So with that said, you have leading lines, you have layers, and you have be typical in order to not be typical. And that is it for today. I hope those three tips helped you out with composition and understanding the most difficult aspect of photography a little better. If you found these tips helpful for you, please consider subscribing to my channel and follow me on social media to help support the quality of work that's going on here. Um, hopefully it gets better and better in the future. On top of that, I have two other things. One is you're not gonna wanna miss out on probably one of the biggest videos I have coming up soon, which is gonna be that Pokeball up there and a bunch of other things I have shown here. It's gonna be a big, big video. And then on my next video, I'm kinda just going down the list on Instagram to see what other things that people wanted to talk about. And I think I wanna talk about gear next. So. Till next time.